guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60. So, before we get into the video on Brent's Wicked Machine that's freshly 8 HP swapped, I want to just show you guys who the winner of the giveaway from two weeks ago is, who's going to be the new owner of an 8speed.au shirt. I haven't got mine on today, it was a bit slack. Uh, but check out the dyno video and you'll see the winner in a second. So there we go. The winner was Asian 47. Thank you very much for everyone that got involved in that. And we might do more giveaways. We'll see how we go. And sorry it's taken so long to announce it. You probably noticed the lack of videos. We've been pretty crazy here doing eight speed swaps and getting ready for halfway hangs, which I'm heading out tomorrow. And so is Brent. Yep, it's Actually, gonna be a good time. How many hours do you leave for halfway hangs? Uh, less than 12. Less than 12 hours. And the car is still on the hoist, just getting a few bits done. But this car, you wouldn't believe it, one week ago had no engine. Actually, you had the whole front off. It didn't yeah, have front yeah. it was actually pretty scary. What, four or five days ago, it was a bare rolling shell, and then the engine itself still had to be built up with the turbo and um, all the intakes and all the lines associated with it. So, so yeah. Oh, it got the, the, the car back together, the engine back in, and then we've decided to do an eight-speed swap. And kind of this is why we haven't finished the F-Truck. We will get onto that maybe in the next week or two, uh, if anybody's wondering what's happened to that. It's his other pride and joy. Yeah. Uh, but as you can see here, we've got Brock, Say hi, Brock. Hi. Uh, he's just finishing up a rather nice looking, you call it an under tray or a bash tray? Bash plate. Uh, bash tray. Here, a bit of tube here to stop anything hitting the front of the gearbox. It's pretty, it's a bit lovely in these chassis. Oof, oof. Ooh, in fact, let me just get a torch and we'll check out how the 8 HP is sitting in there. So we've gone for an 8 HP 70. It's the one we tend to use, the N57 one. We've got one of the Dummy Works, one JZ. 2JZ to 8HP adapter plates in there. We have one of Brock's custom-made rear gearbox mount, I forgot what it's called. And then we've got the custom-made tail shaft to suit. Are you happy with how it's all come together? Yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's been a pretty smooth process so far. Yeah, so it's a smooth process, kind of. A little bit unexpected, but it has been on the dyno. How much power did it make the other day? It rolled off 521 on 18 pound, I think. Yeah. And Is then that what it was making before? Yeah, oh, it's about 490 on 18-ish, yep. Okay, so you've gone up a little bit. Now you've got the order. Are you worried about the automatic for drifting? Because this is a drift car. No, not at all. I drove Dan's FEMA, and um, those few laps I got in it. Was it enough to sell you on? Yeah, pretty much sold it. <laughs> okay, so you've seen what's going on underneath. We've got the 8HP in there. Okay, and the thing I'm excited about showing you guys is how we've got this clutch pedal working. It is not as complex as the setup that we used in the E46 and hopefully it's going to make it a lot cheaper for people to add a clutch pedal to their 8 HP swaps. We'll bring the car down as soon as Brock's finished and we'll show you what's going on and give you a quick demonstration. So this is the unit here, which is a hell of a lot more simple than what we put into the E46. In the E46, we actually ran a slave cylinder at the back of the car, so it's still got hydraulic line running all the way to the back of the car, and then that was compressing the spring. We went for that as a concept because it still has the hydraulic feel. You're still moving the hydraulic fluid through the line but it adds a lot of cost and a lot of complexity. And we kind of thought it was probably gonna be safer on a drift car to not have an extra oil line with a, another slave cylinder hanging off the bottom of the car. And yeah, this is a lot cheaper solution. So what we have here is our clutch feel emulator. It's essentially a housing that's enclosing a spring that we can tune to different pedal feels. And the springs that we're using in these are not an overly expensive or hard to find spring. So even if you want to change it later on down the track, you can. It is currently designed to work in place of a Willwood master cylinder, but we're going to have adapters to run it on Nissans, Toyotas, pretty much any application you can ever imagine, and it just sits there like that. That becomes your clutch feel, and obviously it's connected to the pedal on the inside, so let's have a look at that. Just, just okay, I've actually just placed my eyes on it. It's very hard to get there with the camera, but I'll show you what's going on around the pedal. This lever up here is the linear potentiometer. That is what sends the LAMIC the signal for the pedal position. Hopefully it's getting it in focus. But then essentially, it's just using the standard lever rod or rod that would go into the slave cylinder. It's probably a little bit too hard to push with my fingers. But what we're gonna do now is get it up in the air and Brent's gonna show you how that clutch pedal works with the automatic gearbox. Okay, she's just come down off the hoist. The under tray is all now finished and dude, we're running out of time. We've got to get going. But I just want to show the audience the engine bay quickly, properly. Hey, Brent, what turbo's on this? GD35R. 
and it's now got a built 2J. Correct, yep. It'll be interesting to see uh, if the reliability sticks with it. This car has been in a video before. It was actually in the other drift event that we went to when Spice was driving it, and it was sort of touted as the most reliable drift car ever. How, it's about eight years old, isn't it? Yeah, eight years. Um, I think the 2J's been installed now for about six or seven, and prior to that, I had an SR20, which they're no good. <laughs> Don't, don't, don't make the internet mad. But Brent just gave it a bit of a refresh. He's been giving it a hard time, like I said, for six or seven years. It's now got forged rods, forged pistons. You've got, you've got standard cams, haven't you? Standard cams, yeah, I want the bottom end response. I don't want to keep pulling power at the high end. I don't, I don't really need it. I'd rather the instant power. Yeah, dude, it's, it's such an awesome car, and I did hear it on the dyno the other day. I guess we need to start it up, make sure it still starts. The only thing that's been added for the eight speed is the oil cooler. Yep, oil cooler and then the field spring at the, the firewall. They're the two items that are different in the engine bay. Everything else is the same. As it was, all right. Uh, are you all right to show the audience how this pedal works? In fact, I'm gonna jump in the passenger side. Uh, do we want to take it off the hoist? Yes, we do. Yeah. I'll grab it, Jack, quickly. We better take it off the hoist. This is bloody drift cars. They're not easy to get into. No, the, the side intrusion bars just ruin your day. <laughs> Like me. Um, what am I do? I'll get you to put that somewhere to light your legs up yep. so that the lovely audience can see the clutch pedal. But much like on the E46, we've got the Lamech display there, which will show us a percentage of clutch pedal. But the other thing I was just going to show is the audience. We've now got gear display on your Haltech Race Pack dash. Yeah, I definitely need that. <laughs> yeah, I guess you've got you have eight gears, but I guess that's going to make it easier to work out what gear you're going to need to be in when you're working out your corners on the weekend. Uh, but we've got gear and we've also got trans temp. So two of the vitals are right there and that's connected via CAN bus from the Haltech. No, from the Lamech to the Haltech. Yes. That's all CAN bus integrated. So that's pretty cool. But we've got the second display there. And you can see it's in program mode seven. Yeah, we can change it through the range here. So the, uh, the normal auto and then the sports auto and then the manual mode, which is P7, which clutch pedal. All that sort of good stuff. I'm guessing this one's going We won't be leaving P7. <laughs> All right, uh, start her up and we'll show the audience how the pedal. Now, what's your opinion on how the clutch pedal feels? Um, to be honest, it's almost identical to a normal uh, manual clutch slave setup. So that's what we wanted to go for. Um, my personal opinion, it doesn't quite have the progressive feel. And I think a bit of that is the hydraulic and a bit of it is the pressure plate coming away and compressing the springs on the, on the pressure plate. Yep. But for drifting, yeah, shit's gonna be fine. Isn't yeah, it? most of the time it's like either pull in or pull off, and they're quick movements. You don't need the um, the partial adjustment like riding the clutch. And let's face it, when you take off from the line, it's pretty aggressive anyway. So you're gonna come off the clutch pedal relatively quick. You're not gonna be like inching around a corner trying to get the most feel out of it. Should be good. All right, guys, this is gonna be Brent's first try using the clutch pedal to move the car. So let's give it a go. So the display readout here, yep. as I put the clutch in, full travel, and we read it. We're at about 100%. Alrighty. Then okay, we're in reverse. And then can ride it nicely. That's just partially grabbing. It's funny. Do you reckon it feels like a manual? It's identical. I can't, yeah. It's probably easier to drive because the clutches are more accurate rather than it binding up pretty quick as the, the manualized setup does. So yeah, well, real easy. Let the clutch out, speed up a bit. And then the lock diff. Now we're gonna have to introduce some uh, throttle and release the clutch more. And that's a lot of load on the car right there. So that was um, real easy. Back to neutral. Throw first. And then, yeah. Ready to go drifting. Lost the light. The light's gone flat, but I hope right. the audience can see. So. Yeah, using the piece that we have in place of the slave cylinder, oh no, the master cylinder, we've basically got a pretty easy setup now to add a clutch pedal to your AHP. And crucial part for drifting, hopefully the GoPro's picking that up, but that was all done with like 80% clutch. Yeah, um, introduced that bit more when, we, when the diff started loading up, but it felt pretty normal. That's amazing how it's still progressive and it's all electronic. So clutch in, second gear, and then uh, we'll, we'll cruise off. So it's, it grabs pretty decently at 80% there, and then fully out. It's funny, it always confuses me, because this is an automatic, but it feels, it sounds like a manual. The engine's making manual noises. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, mega. Happy with it? Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, so he's literally going to put it on the trailer. Uh, but before we do that, have you ever done a trans brake skid in your drift car before? It's it's different to say. Actually, I have because I did one just the other, the other day. <laughs> he did test it yesterday. Let's do a little one here, eh? All right. Let's we'll go, we'll go this way. We got the road. Yeah. We are blocked off. Yep. So we'll do second and then hold the lever. Uh, hold on. No, you, just, you need no. Yeah, I need to go back and That's I need it. to let it go into no, no, auto go. mode. Yeah, go. Sorry. I need to just sit it back here and you know. then let the clutch out slowly, all like this. Yeah, I was going to say, you're using the clutch for everything. Yeah. So now we're in auto mode. Now you can engage trans brake. Trans brake, we're sitting here bouncing around. I don't even know. <laughs> Certified ripper. Yeah, that was good. It started blowing smoke out of the end there. Oh man. And you're back to the clutch. You're using the clutch again. Yeah. This is an automatic. You don't need to use the clutch. I'm used to it. <laughs> it's going to take a bit of adjusting. Oh, dude. You're happy with everything. Yes, that's awesome. There's oh. some dark lines. <laughs> bit of cabin smoke. <laughs> All right, dude. Well, one more. You want to do another one? I want to do this, this little one. How to, how to tell someone's a car guy? Gotta play with this toy. Oh, sorry. Boy, they got wheel speed quick then. So no clutch this time when I stopped. There you go. It is an automatic, honest. It just lets you do a lot of really cool things. All right, I'm gonna put this video out tonight and then pretty much sleep for two hours and then we're heading to Rayleigh tomorrow for halfway hangs. Will you take me for a drive at the track? I will. You're the first to go in the car with me. Hear that, everyone? Feeling it. All right, guys, thank you all for watching. Thank you, Brent. Cheers. Thanks for that. Thank you, Dan. Let's go for putting the car together. Okay, so <laughs> we have... <laughs> Hang on. I'm gonna have to smooth that transition out a little bit.